Hi everyone, I'm Big Al with Country Music News International. We're here at CRS in Nashville, a lot of fine entertainers. I really don't have to introduce this man, 21, 21 number one hits, songs like uh, Somewhere Down the Line, I loved them every one. And the one that I picked up on for the very first time, eating a sandwich called Only One You, here he is, everybody knows him around the world, Mr. T.G. Shepard. Al, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and how are you? Well, you know what? Life is great. I'm still doing this after all of these years, <laughs> and uh, I'm blessed to be able to still be touring every week and then do the radio show and still be recording, so life is great. So I'm going to get straight to the point sure. because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, new album that you uh, released, what, 2019? Yep. Midnight in Midnight Memphis? Midnight Memphis. The yeah. title track of that album was written by my dear friend Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what got the album started was when he gave me that song. He said, now, gee, if you don't record this, it'll never get re I wrote this just for your album. And who's going to turn down a Barry Gibb song, okay? Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, Midnight in Memphis was uh, my first commercial solo album in 20 years. And uh, I still did other projects like duet projects and things, but it was a lot of fun doing that. And I'm, I'm just really fortunate to be able to do new music and be able to perform it live on stage. Because, you know, when, you, when you've had hit records, you're singing those same hit records your whole life, mm -hmm. day after day, and it's good to have new songs to put in every now and then. So. Speaking of that, when, when you're out on tour, uh, and you're probably one of the best ones to ask this, you've been in this business for over 40 years, yep. uh, pounding the pavement, a new generation uh, to music, country music. Have you had people come up to you after the show and I'm, I know people come up to you and say, man, T.G. Shepard, I remember you back when. Yeah. But do you have people that say, you know, I never heard of you before. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? And it, and that's good. That's yeah. fresh. Yeah. Because I love for people to discover us. Exactly. Because when you get to a point where you think everybody knows who you are already, it's over. Yeah. Exactly. You, you want to always be bringing people, new people into your fold that will get turned on to maybe what you've recorded in the past. And yeah, no, I, I get that every now and then. And, and then I get also artists that will walk up to me who are monster stars now. Like, I remember the very first time this next guy's name I mentioned, I'm sitting in a restaurant, he walks over and he sits down with a ball cap on and he said, I'm a huge fan of yours. And man, I just came to town and man, uh, I play your songs and the honky tonks. And it was Blake Shelton. Um, so you, it, it goes the other way too. You know, people that don't know you, but then there's new people that have become big stars now that got turned on to your music. That's it's a magical business. Well, I know from a previous conversation, you was even somewhat encouraging to Lee Greenwood in Vegas to come here and, and do. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm cool. out about that. A lot of people do or may not know this, but Lee was a blackjack dealer. Mm -hmm. Lee Greenwood was in Vegas at the Tropicana. And then he would get up and do his shows in the lounge. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and he's dealing me, and we were talking about music. And as I went and saw his show a few times, I said, Lee, come on to Nashville, man. Come to Nashville. There's a lot of room for people like you that sing like you do. Yeah. And he came, and, man, he conquered. He conquered. Did he conquer? <laughs> so, yeah, to have, a, have any kind of influence on someone like Lee Greenwood or someone like that, it's just, I'm just very lucky to do what I do for a living. You're a great man, and you care about people, and you care about Oh, that's the, the key. That's the whole key of it. The whole key is people. I want to remind everybody, it's tgshepherd.com. Go check out his music, his bio, and uh, get a copy of that new album, which I'm sure it's online everywhere, and that's Midnight in Memphis. We have another single that just came out. What? Oh, okay. What? You're not going to believe this. It came out last week. It's a duet with Anne Margaret and Pete Townsend of yes, The Who. I see now. It yeah. just came out. So I, I never thought I'd be connected to those two names. Anne but, yeah. Margaret. Yeah. That's the Anne Margaret that Oh, was yeah. Abbas Viva Las Vegas. Vegas. Oh, that was her, the God. actress. And then, of course, when Pete Townsend came in and did the lead guitar, on it. I went, whoa, people are going to think I'm going rock and roll now. <laughs> well, you've been down many other roads. You yes, I have. I sure have. But you it's know, always good to sit 
and come down the road and sit with you and visit with you, Al. Well, I appreciate that. We don't have. Uh, there's just a couple more questions. I sure. Grab quick. Yeah. Um, Elvis Presley. He was great friends Who? with. Uh, you know the guy. <laughs> what are you, you know. Wow. The yeah, king. I, I think they called him the king of the rock king, and roll. Yeah. Gave you a bus, and I do know you and Kelly still use that bus. But listen, I got to ask this: How many miles is on that bus now? Well, you know, I've got to tell you something. I no longer have the bus that Elvis gave me. Oh, no. it wore out years Did ago. Did you wear it out? Okay. Because he gave it to me in '75 or '6. <laughs> and uh, Sawyer Brown wound up in that bus for a while, and. Uh, <laughs> But no, the, the Elvis's gift to me of the bus was an incredible confidence builder for me. For him to, oh, sure. my first number one record, Devil in a Bottle, came out, and he used to run around the Graceland singing it. And it, it was just so uplifting for me to have somebody of that stature believe in me enough to gift me with a bus. I mean, it was oh, yeah. incredible. But yeah, we were very close friends, and he was a great guy. So you have uh, brought this business, the world, a lot of music, but now you're doing something totally different, and I think this is so cool because you understand the business. You've got the T.G. Shepherd Show on Sirius XM, so when does that air? It airs on Fridays, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern in America, and uh, 2 p.m. Central. It's on Channel 58, Prime Country. And, it, and, it, and that in itself is great because there's a few other artists on Prime Country, like Ronnie Dunn, Dwight Yoakam has his own show. Uh, T. Graham Brown has his own show, Livewire. So to be able to reach a mass audience with, with music of the 80s and 90s and interview my friends on there and to have my show and mention my concert dates, it's a real plus for me. I'm having a blast being a radio guy. Isn't it, isn't it fun, nice to know that people have been in the business like you all these years and you find out, like, I didn't know that that happened to you. Like well, you know, I'll have an artist come in like Reba or This Week is Lone Star. Uh -huh. And when I interview them, I think I know them. But when you interview an artist, you find out things you didn't know. Yep. And then you feel closer to them as a friend and as a as a cohort in music. So yeah, I, I love the interview process. I really enjoy it a lot. Well, I'm enjoying talking with you, but unfortunately we're gonna to have to finish up. Well, it's been uh, so much fun talking with you. A great legend and hopefully a great friend, Mr. T.G. Shepard. Thank you, Al. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And don't you forget, folks, tgshepard.com, the new single, the album, and so much more. Check out this great legend. And for more country music news, always check out countrymusicnewsinternational.com. I'm Big Al here in Nashville for Country Music News International.